Today is day one of 30 days of fascia training. The goal for today is to just do a bunch of research on what I need to eat, if there are specific things that are better for fascia, fascia health. And for those of you guys that don't know what fascia is, I'm probably not gonna give the best definition, but it's like this. Fascia connects and intertwines muscle, bone, tendons, ligaments, nerves, and helps the whole body move as an integrated unit. If the fascia is dysfunctional, then it can affect the movement and capabilities of the entire body. These are some of the proposed benefits of training fascia. Improved athletic performance, reduced pain, improved accuracy, improved movement, improved posture, reduced risk of injury, faster recovery time, better range of motion, fixed imbalances, and better circulation. And all this content that I'm getting and all the research I'm gonna be doing is gonna be mostly from Coach Chong Shi, who I did a video on last year in January. He has a bunch of good stuff and has worked with a bunch of professional players in all these different sports, not just soccer. And he has a lot of good reviews based on his work. Over the last year, I have been doing some of his exercises, but the one thing I haven't been doing is doing them consistently. So I wanna try to just do it consistently for 30 days. And today I'm gonna to build a schedule of something I can follow for the next 30 days. Less of the food stuff and the supplements, but all the training that I can do. I'm not gonna be most likely training every day. I'm pretty sure he said, um, I should be training fascia around three times a week, but I'll look into all this stuff today. That's my goal is to just get um, Get a notepad and just put down a bunch of notes on stuff I need to do for the next 30 days one big topic when it comes to fascia and a huge reason why I'm making this video is that a Lot of people say fascia and lifting weights do not really go together if your fascial system is weak and not developed like if you're someone like Ronaldo who has a strong fascial system and you're working out it, it should be fine because he has less imbalances. But I want to see over the next 30 days, I'm not going to go to the gym at all, which is going to be really weird because over the last, I'd say, six years, I've been going to the gym at least two, three times a week. And people have said in Coach chang testimonials that even without lifting weights for a whole month, they've gotten stronger over 30 days by just doing the fascial training. Well, there, theirs is more over like eight weeks, so around two months. But... I don't want to do it for, well, I'll probably, depending on the results, I'll see if I want to continue for another month. Because everything stems from the feet, another thing I want to prioritize is just trying to wear, I'm not wearing shoes right now, I'm not going to move the camera, but just trying to prioritize being barefoot as much as I can, not using shoes. Obviously, that's not going to apply if I'm going to the grocery store or something, but and I'm not going to document every single thing, but I'm going to just try to be barefoot as much as I can and train barefoot as much as I can. One of the main reasons that I'm doing this is because I currently have patella tendonitis and I've had it for like the last five months. It's, it's like really inconsistent. Some days it'll be fine. Other days it'll be, it'll just be like unbearable where I can't play or train at all and super annoying. Um, so I just want to do this, not lift weights and see if fascia helps improve my symptoms. Then I also have a super tight, super tight upper traps and neck see if I can fix all these issues I have with my body. I know they're not gonna permanently go away. Like, they're not gonna go away in 30 days. I'll, I'm gonna have to do it longer than that. But see if the symptoms improve over the next 30 days. I feel like one of those study YouTubers that just films himself in the time-lapse study. All right, so after around six hours of watching a bunch of his YouTube videos and going through his Instagram, I got all these notes. I'm gonna leave it like this so you guys can pause it and screenshot if you want. Hopefully you guys can read all this stuff. This is like, I, I put it right here. This is everything that I could get for free without paying for his book or without paying so what I was going to say is that this is everything I could get for free without paying for his book or a consultation or doing his course. But there was still a lot of good information and everything that I highlighted on there are the main points that I saw repeated a bunch or stuff that I found that was just more important to, to note. So if you guys want to look through that, the main things that I'm going to be focusing on for the next 30 days are the exercises that I mentioned, and I'm going to show them tomorrow, or when I start doing them, I'll show them. And also rolling my foot with a tennis ball, the bottom of my foot, the plantar fasciitis, every night. 
I'm not sure yet. I just um, I just DM'd him actually asking how many days a week I should be doing this. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be every day. I'm going to try to do it every day. Even if he says two to three days, I might just do it every day. Because on his website, he does mention that... I saw him respond to a comment and it said two to three days. But on his, on his website, there was a section that said um, doing the exercises daily. So I'm going to just do it daily for 30 days. I don't think it can do much harm. We'll, we'll see. But um, And then in terms of food, there wasn't really anything that stood out really. I... Also, I've been taking note over the, like, the past year. I've just been taking screenshots. I'm not of everything, but of, of his story and stuff. Just taking note of foods and exercises, stuff like that. One thing I noticed, I think it was a few days ago, he posted like that you should try to get your B12 vitamins in. So I'm going to be eating a bunch of meats and fish that have um, B12 vitamins in them. And then also getting collagen. through. I have a supplement already. I've been taking it. Not I took it like last month. I haven't taken it in a while. So I'm going to start putting that in smoothies, um, collagen powder. Uh, but obviously that's better. Collagen is better to get through real sources. So I'm, one of these 30 days, I'm going to try bone broth. I don't know how that's going to go. And then blood orange was also, a, he had a post on that. So I'm drinking a bunch of water because fascia is 70% water. I should be doing that anyways. Not too much, but making sure I get enough water in. I've always wanted to actually get into meditation. So for the next 30 days, I'm going to try to meditate every day for probably like 10, 15 minutes. And um, doing Tai Chi. Tai Chi was another big thing that he mentioned, or I saw a lot in everything on the website, on the posts, on YouTube, Tai Chi. Or well, he kind of like on the website, it was more, I think less people go to the website, but I saw it on the website. So Tai Chi, I think it, it'll be good. It's kind of like, I feel like it's similar to meditation, but I could be completely wrong. And also, I got one last video queued up right here. This is a video, so you guys can look it up. I'm not going to show you the notes that I take on it, but it's like 30 minutes long. Even though I said yesterday was day one, today is technically day one because I'm actually starting. So today is day one. Going to start off the morning with some meditation right here. Also, I'm going to be trying to grow a beard these next 30 days. Yeah, and then after the meditation, after the meditation, I'm going to do some Tai Chi. Also, that's going to be my first time ever doing Tai Chi. So, so I'm going to have to look up a YouTube tutorial or something like that. 10 minutes. <laughs> I think I need to clear my nose because my nose is super stuffed. <laughs> I was just sick like a week ago. My nose is stuffed and I'm only breathing through my nose. Today, meditation is honestly really hard. Like making that connection to the mind and between the mind and body is not easy. This is probably gonna be the worst demonstration of Tai Chi you've ever seen in your life. I'm pretty sure the whole purpose is just to go slow. Whenever you want to start something new, it's never gonna be good. It's always gonna be cringy at first. I was like starting to feel stuff in my hands. When I was really like conscious about what I was doing with my hands, I started to actually feel the movements a lot more. I like that Tai Chi. Now I'm gonna head to the field to get all the baseline testing done. All I'm, all I'm actually doing is, uh, I'm gonna do, be doing a sprint. I think a half field sprint and a vertical jump. To keep all the variables consistent, I'm doing it right in the morning. I haven't eaten anything today and I'm also doing the barefoot. My feet are numb. Alright, that's all I get. Like I said earlier, I have been doing the towel curls, but they're with like this kitchen towel and it was definitely the worst material to use for that. I wasn't really getting good traction either, but I got a better towel right here, cotton towel. So I'm going to be using this now, laying it flat, obviously. And then I got a tennis ball, I got a baseball too. <laughs> no, I'm not going to use that though. I got a tennis ball and then I just need to get a marble. Because my knee still hurts, the main goal for the first week is just to keep it light, more static. I think I said that over here. Yeah, more static. Static stuff than dynamic at first. 
And probably next week I'll get into more dynamic stuff I got over here. It's not really a marble, but this is what I'm going to be using. Just got this in the mail, so I'm going to be taking... What is it? What's the serving size? Two capsules. While I'm editing this right now, I realized I forgot to mention that I adjusted my foot positioning from day two to day four to have the foot I'm doing the towel curls with in front of the other one. On day two, it was behind it. But I was watching, I was rewatching Coach Chang Shi's videos and realized I was doing them wrong. Today's day five, and up until now, I've been training my lower body. I want to train it twice, like every three days, I've been training it. But you know, I'm just gonna start training that every day now, or I'm gonna at least do the towel curls every day now. I've been using this for a few months now, but the first time I tried it, it did taste kind of weird. Frozen fruit, collagen, and, and the orange juice. I took these lion's mane mushrooms like for two days, but it just made me hella gassy, so I stopped it. Could just be because my stomach is... My stomach is messed up. It's now been a week of fascia training. This is day seven today. Just want to give you guys some updates on how everything is feeling, how I feel, how my knee feels in terms of the patella tendonitis, and then also how my body feels in terms of how, if I feel more explosive or just more athletic in general. First of all, my, my knee pain, my patella tendonitis, there are days when it feels a little bit better. It mainly feels better right after doing the exercises. I think that's just because it's more engaged, but, and like more warmed up, and it feels worse when it's cold. But overall, maybe there's been like a tiny bit of pain increase or pain decrease. I didn't expect much significant over one week. I'm expecting more significant over the whole month. So not too much there, but in terms of explosiveness, again, the same thing with the knee pain. It hasn't been, there hasn't been a huge change in everything. Like I said, I've been doing towel curls almost every day. I think I've done it five out of the seven days. So I'm gonna take a rest for the next two days and let my feet rest because they feel a little bit sore. And these like, these little, these tendons, I don't know if these are tendons, but these are supposed to be engaged when you're like tightening the foot. Uh, on the first day, for my right foot it was pretty hard. My left foot it was pretty easy. Like it's a lot more obvious on this foot and engaging this tendon right here and this one. These are like the two most. This is the most important one. This is the second most important. But those were always pretty easy. On my left foot. On my right foot, it's gotten a little bit easier. This one is pretty is a little bit easier now. Um, and these ones slowly getting easier with the towel curls. I also haven't done any fitness over the last week. All right, today's today's day nine. Yesterday I had a tooth surgery, so you can probably tell my lip is kind of swollen. I took two days off, day seven and eight. I just rested, and to be honest, I think those days were the most impactful on um, on my progress so far. Because today, I can just feel my my feet just feel more engaged. It's weird, like it's just the morning, but I can just tell. I think the rest did a lot, to be honest. And I've also been taking Epsom salt baths consistently, hot Epsom salt baths, and uh, taking collagen. To be honest, the one thing I haven't been doing consistently, I've been using the foam roller. I've been using a foam roller, like this type of foam roller, but I haven't been using the tennis ball that as much as I probably should. And also the meditation. I only meditated like five out of the seven days. I'm just, I'm just at a grass field. I got my speaker in a ball. I'm just going to set a timer for 30 minutes. Do some juggling, some dribbling. Nothing too much because I haven't played in a while. So I just want to get some touches in. Finish off day 10. We got some rolling, some towel curls, and then some of these. Si 
Today is day 14. It's been two weeks so far. I rested the last two days also. Initially he said go train two to three days. And then I said, oh, I'm gonna train every day. But to be honest, the rest days have had the most impact on my body. And I can tell there's a difference after I rest. Like the day when I wake up, I can tell a significant difference. So from now on, I'm gonna be training, train one day, rest one day, train one day, rest two days, train one day, rest one day, and so on and so forth. My patella tendonitis is still there, improved a little bit, but I'm gonna step things up now and do um, some more exercises that I haven't been doing so far. I've only been doing towel curls and stuff with marbles. And also just increasing the time on the towel curls to I think four minutes each side now. Probably do two sets though, two minutes. I already did the towel curls, so I'm gonna finish off with these exercises and then do 30 minutes of barefoot, just juggling and passing against the wall, dribbling, stuff like that. I got to do the last exercise. The last exercise is a hyper arc hop, which is not the same as pogo jumps. A lot of people, I think, when they see this exercise, just assume that's the same as doing these types of jumps. But you got to focus on keeping this 90 degree angle consistent. And I'll be, I'm not going to be perfect at it on the, on the first try, but I'm going to try to do the best I can with it. My technique is not going to be that good. It's really pretty bad. Looking back at this footage, I realized my technique is completely off and I'm doing exactly what I said not to do, which are pogo jumps. The good thing about filming myself doing these and reviewing the footage is that I can fix what I'm not doing well. So I realized uh, editing the video back that I'm not lifting my heel enough so I'm gonna try to work on that and just incorporate that more into the exercises. Once I started to lift my heel higher and adjust my technique on certain exercises, I realized they were way harder than before. So that's why you guys will see in the top right the time for the exercises and number of sets changed a little bit because I needed more time to recover and get the most out of each exercise. So much harder when you do it right. You guys know how it feels when you get a pump in like your bicep or in your quad, how it's like rock solid. That's how it feels in the bottom of my foot right now. I'm gonna try to play for 20, 30 minutes, but I don't know how long I'm gonna last because my foot actually feels like it's gonna tear. In terms of my imbalances in my right foot and my patella tendons in my right leg. Both of those have actually gotten so much better since last Thursday. Last Thursday was the start of week two. I didn't want to mention anything until now to see if it was consistent over the week. But the one leg exercises here as well as the jumping and I forgot if I added anything else. But those and doing longer towel curls actually helped a bunch. And my, I don't feel my knee, I really don't feel my knee that much. This kind of feels weak. There's no pain there when I'm jumping. After three weeks, I'd say I feel the fascial connection in my left leg go up to probably around my hamstring and my glutes maybe 50% of the time it's just really inconsistent but with my right foot it's always been worse uh, I mainly feel it just in my Achilles and my calf I'd say like 10% of my glutes I just finished all the other exercises I just want to show you guys the last exercise I'm adding with these 30 days it's just a lunge but the whole purpose of the lunge is keeping that foot elevated, like always, and then engaging the glutes instead of the quads. Also, I don't know how, the, how far my foot should be. I can actually feel it in my glutes right now. I'm gonna hold that for a minute and do two sets on each leg. My foot just cramped up. 
Today is day 29, the last workout of the 30 days. I'm doing the same workout I've been doing for the last week. And tomorrow we're gonna see the results. I can subscribe. I think it was week one where I showed this, how it's so easy for me to do the tendons on this side. And it was super hard for me to do them on my right foot, but I can do it a little bit now. After 28, 29 days. I wanna show you guys the towel curls today just to show a comparison from day two and the end of the challenge. Otherwise, I don't think I'm gonna show any of the other exercises. I feel like I put my whole life on hold for this challenge. I wanna start off by saying I wasn't consistent with everything. Only thing I was consistent with were the exercises. When I had them scheduled, I would do them. Epsom salt baths I was doing every day. And meditation, I'm not gonna lie, I only really did that the first week. Maybe like once after that. The food I was kind of consistent with, maybe like every few days I would have the co collagen supplements. So just to put that into perspective when you hear all these answers. The only thing that really does matter are the exercises. I feel like at the end of the day, the exercises did do the most for me in terms of benefiting my athletic performance. It's hard to measure a bunch of stuff because there are so many variables, but that's just how these self-experiments work. Patella tendinitis, like I said in week two, it improved a lot. For the most part, I don't even feel it anymore. It just feels a little bit weak. Some days it does come back. That's mainly if I'm if I don't warm up. I feel like when I don't warm up, it just gets worse. And my shoulders, my traps, I said at the start, those haven't really gotten better. I've been doing rolling on the on my foam rolling on my back. I think it's just the way I sleep, to be honest. And my imbalances, my right my right leg still feels weaker than my left. I don't expect everything to be perfect after 30 days, but there were improvements in terms of that. Imbalances on my right foot and right leg did go away a bunch after week three, I'd say like day 25 or so. I felt more stronger in my right leg when I was doing certain exercises. Also ankle stiffness, I have written here. On around day 27, I felt a lot more ankle stiffness when I was jumping. My heel wasn't touching the ground as much. I didn't do any fitness or training, so I gained a bunch of weight. I've been trying to bulk anyway, so I'm eating more. So keep that in mind. It's going to be probably different results if you're training at the same time. It could be probably better, if I'm going to be honest. Or don't overdo it. My feet were sore a bunch of the days, so I'm assuming if you're training on top of that, they're going to be even more sore. So you probably have to lessen the load that you're doing. The proposed benefits of faster training I listed at the start. Improved athletic performance. Uh, I'll see based on the test results that I did. The vertical jump and sprint. I just reviewed the footage and compared the vertical jump and sprint from day one. And there was not much of a difference. The one small detail I did notice in the sprinting was my technique improved a little bit. In the jump, my knees were bent. It's hard to measure if I improved based on all these different angles I was filming at. And when I started the sprint, when I started the timer and the editing, it's, it's confusing. So I think it's really hard to measure these things. One thing I didn't mention at the field is that I felt a lot more springy and just on my toes. So I think that did improve in that sense. Reduced pain, yeah, my, my pain reduced my right knee. Improved accuracy. Actually, this one is, I didn't show this on camera, but yesterday when I was training, and passing the ball against the wall, I did notice improved accuracy a little bit. I think it's due to me being on my toes more. I'm not sure how much that connects to fascia. I mean, it had to do with the exercises I was doing, so I did notice improved accuracy. Improved movement, improved posture, didn't really notice any changes with those. Reduced risk of in injury, I haven't played, so I don't, I don't know how that's gonna work. Faster recovery time, not sure, haven't tested. Better range of motion. I haven't really tested that either. Fixed imbalances, yes, I, I noticed a difference in the fixed imbalances, that is one thing. My right leg improved a bunch over the last 30 days. Better circulation, I have no idea how I'm gonna measure that. To give a super short summary, I, I would say that this training is definitely worth it if you can add it on top of your other training. It's so easy to do, it like, takes like 10 minutes, maybe every few days, it's not that hard. And you just need a towel, you don't need much equipment. So I would consider just trying it out, you got nothing to lose. I'm gonna continue doing it over the next 30 days. 
not gonna document it. You guys can maybe, maybe in like another video, I'll mention how, how it's going for the next 30 days. Cause I think over even more time, it'll improve a lot more. The first 30 days will be a little bit slower. I'm pretty sure. And after that, it should, I should improve a little bit more. People have said in testimonials that they feel stronger doing fascia training and not lifting weights at all for a whole month. I'm not gonna lie, I feel weaker and I look weaker. I think it's because I haven't even been doing other exercise, so maybe it's a bad measurement there. But I do feel weaker in general. Not even, not like much, not a lot weaker, but I feel a little bit weaker in general. I think that just comes with not training for 30 days, but I don't feel stronger at all. See, that's, that's a lie. My, my lower body, my ankle, stiffness in that area my calves feels a little bit stronger like it can hold more weight but besides that i don't feel stronger at all it's just the only down there everything else feels like i lost muscle mass the better form of measurement are over time seeing how i progress once i start training again and how i how my levels improve on the pitch how much less likely i'm injury prone these type of things are going to be measured once i start training again and playing in games so the only way to find out is to subscribe Okay. 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 Okay.